Hey, what's up? Steve here, and I'm back today to talk about one of my favorite applications. That's right, uh, Capture One. And more specifically, to talk about Capture One on the iPad. Now, this was released a little while ago, depending upon when you're watching this video, of course. When it came out, I played with it. It was really cool, it was really interesting, but it left me wanting more. Well, I'll tell you what, Capture One read my mind and was like, Steve, Steve, hold on, let's just release it and then we'll do more and more updates like really fast. We'll give you a ton of updates. It didn't take long before they added tethering, which was like, wow, this is amazing. Not only tethering, but wireless tethering. Then on top of that, they added more and more features. And now I'm super stoked to announce that live sessions have been added to the iPad. And I'm really happy that Capture One provided us a link so that you could have two months free access to Capture One on the iPad. So definitely hit the description down below for that link. So this is really freaking cool. And if you're not familiar with live sessions, it's a way for you to take a session that you have. Now, let me paint a scenario. Capture One started in the studio, right? That's, that's where it was born. And that's where I started using it, was for tethering purposes. So, tethering in the studio, great. Client is there, they're looking over your shoulder, they're watching the shots come in, you're doing ratings, comments are happening in real time. Awesome, the world has changed. Remote is, is what we all do now. So, live sessions are the way for you to start a session in the studio, send a link to a client remotely, and allow them to see the images as they're coming in in almost real time across the world. So that started on the desktop, AKA laptop, and now it's on the iPad. And so for me personally, I've been using Capture One on the iPad more and more for studio sessions. It's just been really cool. There's some nice flexibilities with it. Sure, I still use it on the laptop and the desktop, but knowing that it's available on the iPad is really cool. And if you haven't seen one of my previous videos where I talked about that experience using the iPad on location, check the description, check the link. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you a quick little demo that I put together uh, between myself and Meg, who is on my team, and we work in an office building where we have an office at one location, we have a studio at another location, and then there's a co-working space down the hall. And what we do on any given shoot, especially when we have lifestyle work, is we actually utilize the co-working space because it's kind of designed almost like a lived in area. And it usually gives us a few scenarios that we could utilize where we could pop around and get five or six different looks within a couple of hours time. So it's really great not having to build sets or create staging in the studio. So what I wanna do is just kind of quickly cut to that, show you what we did, and then we'll cut back here. All right, so Meg is here, yay. And I sent her the link, and now she'll be able to remotely view all of the shots as they come in here. And the benefit here is that Meg is gonna be able to add some star ratings, some color tags to kind of let me know if I'm getting some good stuff or if I'm getting some bad stuff. All right, so now I'm just gonna go scoot over to my location. which is conveniently just down the hall. But I've got this little lifestyle area set up over here. We're just gonna do a little tabletop action and I'm gonna get tethered and connected to the iPad with the R5 and we'll get some shots. So one of the coolest things about being in this building is having access to a space like this. So this is the co-working space in this building, conveniently called Cowork. Uh, it's really nice when we need to do some pickup lifestyle shots. We've brought models in here before. We've done full video shoots in here. So I'm just going to do a couple of quick shots for one of the clients that we work with. They make a crypto cold storage device. If you're familiar with the crypto world, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, it's all good. It's a card. So here on the iPad, I'm going to go ahead and connect my camera. And in just a second, you're going to see it show up right over here as it does. Uh, EOS R5. Tap on that. I'm going to go into my settings here. And now I'm gonna head over to shoot. And one of the things that I just wanna make sure I'm doing is I'm capturing not only to capture one on the iPad, but also capturing to the SD card on the camera, which is awesome that it allows you to do that from the iPad. So I've just got a couple of test shots in there to get my bearings. What I've done is I've made sure that my Arculus card lifestyle folder has been set as the capture folder. And then on top of that, what I went ahead and did is I accessed my share settings. So I've already shared this with Meg. She's on my team, she's gonna be reviewing the shots. I sent it to her in an email. She went through, verified to make sure that she has access to this only. And I can change those settings, but what I wanted to do was make sure that she has the ability to rate, tag, and comment on these shots as they're coming in. So that, that way, as I'm getting these shots, she can give feedback to me in real time when she's down the hall. She's working on some other stuff. I'm working on this. It's a nice way for us to be able to connect. So maybe let's show 
a little bit more of the package. And if I tap back to go back to the grid, what I'll be able to see um, is if Meg is adding on any uh, notes, if she's adding any color ratings, if she's adding any star ratings, things like that. So I can already see right over here that she went ahead and added a color tag rating onto this shot. So that way I know that's a keeper. Yep, and she just did it right over there. She did a color rating and she added on a one star. So I already know that like, you know, I'm getting some stuff that we're gonna need and that's gonna work. I'm just gonna keep going through and getting a couple more of these. Now, one of the really cool things about this system is that she has the ability, like all live sessions, right? When you share from Capture One, she has the ability to not only add star ratings, and color ratings, but she also has the ability to add comments. Now, I'm not gonna see the comments come in directly on the iPad app. So what I do in order to see those comments is I tap on copy share link right down over here. So once I've copied the link from Capture One, I paste it into Safari, then I'm gonna tap on continue without logging in because I don't need to log in for this session. I just wanna see what Meg is seeing so that that way I can view those comments as they come in. So I'm gonna tap on continue without logging in so I can see all the star ratings, I can see all the color tags, but if I tap on the magnifying glass, what that's gonna allow me to do is access my filters. And if I tap on that, I, I can say, show only photos with comments. So that, that way I can see, is Meg adding any comments? And in fact, there's one image here where she's added a comment. So if I tap on this, I can take a look at this and it says, can you show me a different phone case? So that way I know, cool, we've got some shots. She's looking for a different phone case, perfect. I've got some accessories, some props with me. So I'm gonna take this off. So these shots are coming through. She's able to get them in real time on her machine, she can keep adding star ratings. Yep, she's adding in some color tags. And then what I can do to check to see like, hey, she digging this, does she want a different phone case? I'm gonna go back to Safari and I'm gonna close this out. And you can see over here in the bottom left, it tells me that there are 21 new updates and I can hit refresh, right? To make sure that there's new results that came in. And if I tap on back, that filter system is still gonna be there. So it looks like she hasn't added any other comments to any other image. So I assume she's digging what we're doing. So as you can see, being able to use live on the iPad not only allows you to collaborate from anywhere in the world, really, but even as simple as collaborating from right down the hall. So now being able to use live on the iPad is incredible. It just gives that much more flexibility in the shoots that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Cool, so you just saw the little demo that we put together. Uh, granted, that was super short and sweet, but I wanted to give you a better idea of what that real world scenario might actually look like. I will say it's an awesome tool, but I really wish that I had cellular on my iPad because if I had cellular on my iPad, then I could do live sessions anywhere and I wouldn't have to worry about that. So for me personally, this is a great excuse for me to upgrade my iPad now. Just don't tell my wife. There's a few other things that I didn't mention during that demo that I wanna cover right now. So one of the things that I noticed is that your session, when you create it, it by default expires after seven days, which I think is a pretty reasonable amount of time. The other thing too is that you really wanna ensure that your client registers, that way you know who's commenting, especially if you have more than one client. You may or may not have been in that situation before where you've got two or three or four people chiming in on the same thing and you wanna be able to decipher who the feedback is coming from. One of the other really cool things I noticed after that demo was that when I went to my iPad to review the images and I tapped on view to view the live session, it still existed because it hadn't expired yet and I was still able to view the comments that were there. So when I logged in with my own account, I could see Meg's comments still there. So there's a great benefit to know that when a client is logged in and they're adding comments, those comments won't go away. Now, after seven days or after the session expires, they're gonna be gone. But it's really cool to know that you can go back in time or just encouraging your client to be able to add as much feedback as possible during that session so that, that way you have your notes right there. And I think at this point, the only thing that I'm left wanting, which isn't really a whole lot, but it would just be the ability to have the commenting directly into the app. So all in all, I think this is a great improvement and it's really cool to see the progress that Capture One has made on the iPad and just on the desktop app. They've been going full force and I love it. I love to see it because I know that there's a lot of people recently that have been switching. It seems like switching is in the air recently, right? With video editing, photo editing apps, Capture One is recognizing that and they're adding in a lot of features that are very useful and they're not just adding in fluff. And for me personally, 
correctly, that makes all the difference. Again, a big shout out to Capture One for providing a link to give you two months of free access to Capture One on the iPad. Again, hit the description down below for that link. If you like this video, hit the bell, hit subscribe, leave a comment, ask a question, you know the drill. And if you wanna check out some of the other videos, links down below, start clicking around, you'll find some more stuff, Capture One, and even more content here on Sharpen. Thanks.